And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Yala Fanina Rakmi from Indonesia. She had a life-changing near-death experience after being stung by a jellyfish, which we are going to learn about and more. Yola, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. I'm so glad to be here on your podcast. So let me introduce a little about me. My name is Yola. I born and raised in Indonesia, uh, in the city named Bandung. So uh, I have a bachelor in communication. So let's start our uh, story about how I faced a near-death experience. It happened in 2017. So at that time, I was going to a vacation uh, in uh, another island. It's named Kapulawan Seribu. It's in English translation mean Thousands Island. Because as you know, in Indonesia, we have more than 18,000 uh, of islands. So the location of the islands is uh, near of uh, Jakarta. So I went, I booked a private tour. So the, dri the driver uh, took me to, to the port and then I go by boat, three hours by boat. And I arrive in the um, uh, 1000 Island or Kepulauan Seribu. Uh, at that time, my uh, I am physically not very fit, but I'm okay because um, I was doing fasting for one month and then it's holiday. Uh, first day was okay. The uh, the island was so beautiful. It's named Tidung Island. And then the second day, it start happened. So I went to the beach. I went there by uh, 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 cycling. And then I went snorkeling. And then when I was down, I felt city on my feet. Like it's a... Uh, Maybe jellyfish because, uh, but the water is clear, but I couldn't see, but I feel like some electric like that. But it was not pain. It was just a little, uh, don't, then I still continue my snorkeling. Everything is okay. But when I uh, come back to my cottage and thankfully they they uh, uh, serve us a three times meal so we don't have to uh, look around and I start feeling fever at that uh, I think after uh, I get stung it was one hour after that I feeling fever and the fever I feel like, like so strange because it's like like out of nowhere it was high fever and then I am shaking and then I grab a blanket and everything and nothing happened like I'm get shivering more and then uh, after that uh, this is the thing that I uh, my thumb uh, start feeling numb, like it's big. So I was like trying to uh, speak, but my I, I was like uh, like that, like it's so. Weird. And then uh, and then someone knock knock because it was in the like a cottage, so they serve uh, uh, serve food to me. And on the food, it was a plate of uh, rice and fish and. I think some shrimp. So this is also, you know, that so many people are allergic to shrimps. So maybe I am one of it, but I didn't notice it. So I just eat it and it's getting uh, worse and worse. So I was like all swollen before only tongue, but then I can see that my skin, it's just like a red dot on my skin. And then I feel like start swollen, but I'm because of high fever. So I'm not sure about the whole body swollen. But then I remember I text uh, the driver who took me to the island, like send me back. So it was like uh, chaotic for me. Why? Because I, there is no hospital on the island. And I have to go by boat to reach the nearest port. It was three hours on the boat and also uh, from the port to the main city it's I don't know maybe like two and a half hours more mm. and then uh, I'm I was struggling to text the driver to pick me up because like I don't know like I 
very hard for me to texting but then uh, he got the message and then the next day i think around eight by help and then uh, from the owner of the cottage or the who's working there i'm not sure they uh, put me on the boat and what happened on the boat i really like you know i just laying on the boat like I don't know where is the chair, where is the, I don't even proper, I just lay down and then, uh, and then the driver found me and he also get uh, confused and panic what happened, like, uh, where should I take you? Because we are far from everywhere. Uh, be, uh, actually, it is after reach the port. So he said, do you want me to take you to Jakarta? Jakarta is the uh, nearest city, it's uh, the capital of Indonesia. Uh, but then I still thinking if I go to Jakarta, I don't know where is the hospital and also maybe some registration, which is very will be difficult because it's not a familiar city for me. So I said, like, just take me to Bandung. And then it was holiday. So actually the distance between the port to my city, Bandung, will take four hours. But because it was a long holiday, so it took like uh like i think 7 or 8 hours so i arrived late night maybe midnight and uh, i just go to the uh there there is a 24 hours pharmacy so i went there and then i met the doctor i couldn't explain anything proper i just saying i'm sick i'm sick i'm sick give me medicine and then the doctor also uh panic and check on me and i have so many dots or red dots so so he give me medicine there and i eat all the medicine at that time like i i just took uh, water and i drink the medicine and then i say to my driver take me home and then uh, I went home. Uh, it was my father who opened. Uh, I think it was three o'clock in the morning. So I just said to my father, please don't disturb me. I'm very sick. I want to sleep. I said like that. And then uh, I went to my bed. I sleep and um, and nothing get better. Not even better. I feel like, oh, I feel like, uh, you know, like deep shaking, but it's it's kind of not fever, like just shaking, like like some something pushing or I don't know for sure. But then uh, I couldn't, I feel so much thirsty, but I couldn't say a single word. I couldn't. So I was just on the bed like, uh, uh, and nobody came because I think my voice is very low. And also my father told the other family member, don't disturb me, she needs rest and so on. But my mom was checking on me, like I think maybe at 10 in the morning. And she was all shocked, like seeing me whole red, like completely red, like what happened to you? My mother screamed and then uh, because um, they took me, we call we call a neighbor and they uh, took me to the car. They put me on the car and drive me to the nearest hospital. So I went to the emergency. But uh, I think I still remember. But they said that I lost conscious. But I, me myself, when uh, driving to the hospital, I feel I remember it. But they said I already lost conscious. So my, my eyes is like seeing up like that. So I was reached the hospital. So I was in emergency room. I still remember that the doctor asking my father what happened, but nobody can explain. They have no idea what happened. And then I see so many nurses around me. And then uh, after that, uh, everything. So I see all these people like I'm going up. So I see like like here, I see they are down, like I'm going up. But um and then uh and that uh time I see not I see I sense angels. So I just knew that they are angels, but I didn't see their face or feature, but I can feel their uh steps because their their walking steps is not like human. 
they are like wind and there are many of them there are millions billions of them so there are a lot so like everything is uh feel like opening up like i see angels i see i see uh you know like i see people like i don't know why they are panic but uh, like it's supposed to be not panic and at the time i'm no more feeling a uh, pain or fever no i just seeing them so i see like my father i see doctor i don't understand why do they panic because they everything is good uh, i don't understand that but um and then after that this is the part uh the part when uh like I, I go a little up a little up and then i go more far away and then i uh but like my body is uh with me i mean i i don't see like people say that they see their body lying on the bed and they're just going up but no my body is with me i'm going up and then this is the most imp uh beautiful that i see like i went up to the sky so on that sky i see surrounding me is completely different with this world it's extremely different like nothing similar so uh you know like uh i i reach at the room so the room have like uh all room in this world we have four walls right and but this one like one walls is very beautiful is very different so the color is uh, like a graduation of purple but it looks like a spectrum of different kind of purples that we never seen here in this world so uh it's so, so and it's moving so it's like spinning is very beautiful and and I hypnotized by just seeing the walls. Like I see, like I feel like I don't want to move because it's so detailed, it's so beautiful. And then I move to another wall. It's another uh for example, this this is this first wall is like a purplish, and then the the second wall is like ethnic, ethnic uh type of you know, Aztec, I don't know the type, but the motif of ethnic is so deep so rich in color so beautiful and different pattern which is i think like i said like i don't know this this is kind of picasso art or what but this is so different it is so beautiful and then i went to another walls also like everything so they another walls they have a a tree you know like a lot of the a lot of the ring movie tree so I saw like so lively tree like that, like tree with branches and and I saw a bird there. So I was like, oh, where am I? Like, uh, but that place because it's so beautiful. Like I feel like I don't want to go. Just I'm I'm here. I'm perfect. Like I I, I want to enjoy just me and myself and with all these beautiful surroundings. So after that um, i go up again to the uh, second sky so basically it was i'm um, uh for now like i remember this story maybe it lost 10 percent. so i couldn't uh, remember i was going to seven layers of sky or five layers but i'm sure it's more than four layers of the sky and then the second layers, it was amazingly a fragrance. The fragrance is so beautiful. I still remember the type of the fragrance. So it's like a rose, tuberose, mark, or, you know, uh, patchouli. I don't understand, but it's combination of flowers and some herbs, which is very beautiful, which is very, like, because the, 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 the fragrance smell is uh in circulation so it's not like if you're uh, putting just aromatherapy it's but this is moving like wind so you feel it you feel it uh so one one uh round different another uh, round you feel another fragrance different all beautiful so it was 
you know, because it's very beautiful, I start crying because it's like unbelievable for me. I never experienced something like this and I never ever imagined like this thing happened. Like it's like it was so real. And then I go another, another in another layers of the sky. I start seeing, um, you know, like a cloud, cloud and also the sky. The cloud and the sky is like uh, like in the comic. So when we watch a cartoon or a comic that the 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 sky is moving and smiling like the the cloud is smiling and moving, making a uh some like looks like apple. So it was like so the third layers, it was like a childhood dream. So like uh, the the pink color of the sky. So it was it was like beautiful, but it was interesting for me. Like I couldn't. Oh, I didn't know that what I watch in the cartoon is alive. So I was just assuming that. But then I go another layers, and this is the most interesting part. That on the last uh, uh, sky, I only see train station. Uh, train station that I went to Singapore, they have MRT, uh, uh, what is it called, subway. So I arrived there and I was like, oh, this is like uh, only this, like, because this is real, this is the world, this is not imaginary. Like I feel like I'm going to Singapore and that's it. And then the angel smiled to me and then the angel said, so the angel who I saw when I uh, still in hospital is a lot, but when the angel on the last is only one angel. So uh, only one angel and he smiled to me like, and then he said like, yeah, this is, this is it. So uh, asking, uh, do you know why you are here? Like this, uh, I said, uh, I don't know why I am here. And then um, uh, the, the angel said, uh, let me show you. So uh, there on the last stage, I saw a people. So some of the people I knew in my real life, but some of them I didn't know at all. Who are they? But I still remember their face until now. Be like, how come? Like, I never seen someone in my real life, but they are there. And then the angel says, so there are the people who are who will go to heaven. And I will tell you one by one uh, the reason why they want to go to heaven. So the first one, uh, there's a guy, uh, he's like 30 years old. He's a, a Chinese uh, ethnicity. So he was he will going to the heaven because he helped a grandma across the street. Uh, that is his good deeds that will make him going to heaven. And then uh, another one, there is a girl who uh, will go to heaven because um, uh, because uh, she was like considered as a naughty girl. In our society, if the girl is like oh, too much partying, uh, like that, consider naughty. But she's like, uh, she's very, like, take it lightly. So she was just, mm, yeah, smile like that. So that's a good deed because no matter what people are uh, saying bad words to you or assuming something wrong to you, you don't reply back to them. You just smile and let it go. So that's the girl uh, going to heaven because of that. And then uh, another one is like um, one of the men, like he's like in his 40 or 40 more. And he has not uh, get a change to get married. Why? Because he had to take care of his old mother and he's doing it sincerely. So that's why he went to heaven. And then uh, I think that's all I remember, but it was on like six people, but for now I only remember four or five of them. 
I don't remember all the good deeds. And then, uh, so the this is the lessons that the angel told me, like, uh, don't ever judge people because you didn't know. What you think these people is looks good or these people who's maybe for you looking bad on or inappropriate, but you don't know that God loves all of them. Don't ever judge people. Don't ever assume on people. And then just do your own and then focus on you. And uh, you have to know that uh, God merciful and how God loves all of his creation, no matter what. So um, only the small deeds like help other people crossing the street. So this guy uh, going to heaven because that action is so dear to God. So not a big things that you can think. So so what uh, based on that teaching is like going to heaven is uh, is not is um, basically is what you do for humanity. A little things that you do to people, it does matter like that. So that's my hearing I could hear. How did you come back to your body? Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, so I, yeah, I remember. So I, I saw these people uh, going to train. Uh, they go to tr with the train station, like MRT in Singapore. They go, and then I left there. So uh, I watched them go, and then I said, what about me? Like, uh and then, uh, but the angel doesn't say anything. And then I goes into the tsunami, like like a wave, like a wave surrounding me. The color is uh, like your background color, blue, blue with like these uh, stars or dots. So it's wave, 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 and I going back. And I, uh, I'm going back. I was not on emergency room anymore. I'm on a room. On hospital, they said I was on emergency room for 23 hours. So I didn't know that it's time passing for 23 hours. When I back, I'm on the room. And then I spent another five days on the hospital before going back home. And the doctor said, uh, diagnosed me with uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome. It was on the allergic yes yola thank you for sharing your experience with us when thank you me. first were rising above i'm assuming you were rising above your body you mm -hmm. felt angels around you but you didn't see them but it, no i didn't but it sounds like to me at the train station you did see the angel yes yes uh uh i did not see like this face to face but because He's talking like here, like ah. he's tall. No, he's talking in back of me, like he's talking clearly on my ear. So I know that he's there. Okay. He is, and it, and he is like a full uh, figure, uh, like not only footstep, but he is full of him, like that. When you are in the room with these beautiful walls. Do you feel like they were really walls or doorways into other realities? If you say that it was a door to another reality, that's very possible. That's very possible because it's moving. Like uh, if I touch, like if I think now because of your question, maybe if I hold my hands to that wall, it it me will take me maybe like that it was so beautiful it was magnificent and they greet me so in each sky the angels greet me hello greetings mm -hmm. like they're welcoming me so you said that you had a body when you when you were up above yeah, in the like sky it. did you actually see your mm -hmm. body no i don't i don't see my body i don't see like i see me wearing clothes? No, I don't. I don't. You're right. I don't see my body. But I just feel I'm going with all my body. Like, it is me. It's mm -hmm. not like 
flying without any entity but uh, yeah i didn't see you were right yeah i don't see myself but you also didn't happen to see your physical body laying in the hospital no. did you on the hospital like did you look down and see your body laying there in the in the emergency room when you were leaving uh no or see no. the doctors and the, see or see that. or see the doctors and nurses around your body no i don't i see doctors and nurses but i don't see my body there you're right i don't see but i see the doctor is panic uh, this is the very interesting question because I don't question myself about that. Yes, mm -hmm. when I go up, I see doctors, I see nurses, I see my father, I see my brother, but I don't see my buddy there. Mm. Yes. Do you remember any of the conversations that they were having? Mm, no. When I was leaving, they are just panic, but no conversation. Like, like mm. I see their mouths, but the conversation i don't but before i'm leaving i that's why the last time i remember the doctor asking my father what happened and my brother and they couldn't explain that one i remember yes did you tell your family and friends about your experience and if so what did they say yeah i said because they visiting me after on the hospital so many of them uh, visiting me and then I said my experience, and they are so amazed. They said like, uh, "Oh, you are lucky. You are a chosen one because no, uh, it's not a uh, common things to experience these things. So it means that you, uh, you, you, this is the but one of the someone who had, uh, not experienced it, but men hear many." He said that this is usually happen because I was like 30 something when it's happened. Usually at the age 33, that start people when they're, uh, you know, mature in spirituality start uh, happening like this. Yeah, he said like that. They, I remember. So, yeah, because in Eastern culture, something like this is... Um, more common i could i would say so this yeah they because i also have an experience that my buddy my friends died and come back to life like that how did your life change after this experience basically when this experience uh uh because i have another experience but when this experience it was this change is only last for three months but i could sense more sensitivity like i could sense like for example um, a, there are a beggars like i could sense that how they're feeling sad or frustrated and i could see which one is maybe not doing it as a profession some people are just a beg for money but they're actually they're not in the need of it so i could and then for uh because indonesia is very um populated so you see so many people there they are uh, selling something on the street like street food so i could see like some of them like really hoping someone to buy their food like that so you know the sensitivity is like you have that kind of instinct so also about the animals like I could feel more loving, more touch feeling to the animal. And sometimes this is very interesting. And recently I start feeling the plants also, not just animal. I see the trees and somehow I I can feel that the trees are also smiling or they are like moving or dancing. So this is, yeah, this is, but the trees is recently, just like for six months, but on 2017, I only feel the love of the uh, humanity and for the animals. So did you have another experience after this? I have in uh, uh, July and, and August 2021. What happened then? Yeah, it, it was a uh, COVID. So it was, I still remember it was COVID variant Delta. Uh, and then it was uh, 
affecting uh, Indonesia so much. So, so people suffered. And then I still remember. So uh, during that COVID, I was at home. So uh, mostly I make busy myself with exercise. I, I do uh, from a YouTube exercise. And then I spend days and days, and then uh, one one time, like I was stuck to the music, so it is start when I stuck to the music. So this music like make a addiction, so I don't move to any other music. I repeat it again and again and again and again until until uh, one day, like I lost my conscious. So um, then I start I start sensing and feeling that there's some um, entity who live with my body. Some what you call it if you understand the gene word. So we call it gene. So they're uh, with my body together with me. So whenever I move, uh, they also move. And then uh, this is. This experience is very uh, difficult for me uh, because it's uh, troubling me so much. And it was the situation also, no, uh, the family uh, couldn't take me to the hospital because hospital was overload. Everything is uh, too much patience there. So I was like at home, I couldn't sleep. And then, uh, yeah, you know, like, People maybe might say that I I went mad or something, uh, but the thing is, uh, yeah, there's some entity who's you know sticking to me, so they start to uh, cure me with a spirituality of Islamic spirituality, but it was it was uh, not work until it was work on the and. Uh, it was work on 10, 10 of August 2021, so I get cured. For those people who don't know, Yola yeah. feels like she was attacked by a jinn, which is basically exactly. a, which is basically a demon in Islamic yes um, yes um, beliefs, right? Yes, it's a demon. So, so, and we talk about that sometimes about how how people feel like they've got some kind of entity attachment so you had this demon yeah. attachment and then yeah and then there was an islamic um procedure to remove the entity yes 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 islamic have a com comprehensive way how to deal with this entity so we are uh reading uh from our holy book al-quran some first that we read, but it wasn't at that time. It wasn't not very uh, effective to me. Mm -hmm. So, but the and then I felt like um, because uh, in Islam we we uh, have a saint. You call it saint, mm -hmm. yes. So there 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 is a saint who helped me who can take me out from the demon. Yes. How do you think the demon attacked you in the first place? Mm, why they attack me? Mm -hmm. you mean? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe uh, because they, I don't know for sure the reason why, but let me just uh, on my perception, like they want to uh, uh, live, like live, at the place where we are living. Like because uh, this demon or jinn in Islam, we believe that they don't have a physical body. So they are like ether, like air. So they, they need a place where they can, uh, they want uh, our physical body. That's why they uh, come to us like that. So, so they use my body as a media. We we just say like that. Mm -hmm. If we go back to your near death experience, yeah. did did that affect your faith in Islam in any way? My death experience, yes, of course. 
of course, because uh, because uh, see, uh, we now I have a better understanding about life. So uh, this is the most beautiful message is that God loves all His creation. That's what I believe. So don't ever differentiate any people, any belief, uh, any background. So because that it's considered that um, you just have to do all the good things and the kindness to all human beings. Because mostly the conflict comes because you think that people think we are superior to them, that they are less than us. But basically, no, like uh, God loves all his creation. Either you are uh, have education or you are illiterate, it doesn't really matter. And uh, and we, for example, we do whatever we believe it is right. But basically, uh, the right itself, if we say what is right, what is wrong, it's uh, only God know who can say what is right, what is wrong, because it's depend on your culture, social background, but the absolute, absolute right is God itself, like that. What's interesting to me is it's pretty common that people discover on the other side that it's the little things that matter, not doing big things of kindness. Yes, really. It is just the little things that we we think we are uh, very we ourselves see ourselves very good doing good things, big thing, big things. But actually, when we care about other people, helping only small things to other people, like and also uh, don't ignore small things because maybe that small things bring you to heaven. For example, if I have a small bones, like give it to the cat. Maybe for you, it, for us, after we are eating chicken, it is only five minute jobs, but we don't know. For the cat, maybe they don't find meals for two days or three days. Maybe it's a life survival, right? It's sent by God. So uh, this is the lessons that no matter small things are matters, so don't skip it. If you have some grains, put it for the birds, put it for the cats, so yes. Do you think it's possible that when we do big acts of kindness, that mm -hmm. there's planning behind it and intent behind it? Whereas when we do small acts of kindness, it's just spontaneous and it's purely from the heart. So it, they're, they're actually more valuable that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 you're right. You're right. Because uh, sometimes as a human, when we want to go, do big things, sometimes we want to portray like ourselves, you know, having a, a image that we are this and that, but that small things or small deeds, because it's a, that is the true you. Actually, you are not wearing any mask. That is you, you know in the in the middle of your busy days and then sometimes you have to do something else but you see oh my uh i the my food for the the wild birds are finished then i go so maybe and somehow uh remember that uh life help is not only help inspirations usually my experience is comes after i'm doing that small things for example, that I'm stuck in uh, writing something. So when I just leave my room and see surrounding, see, like be aware, mindful what happened outside the world. So don't, uh, because I work only on my room and then I go outside, then I take a deep breath, then I start seeing trees, like I see plants. So I get inspired more, like I feel like the connecting more. And I always believe, uh, like outside of we are human being, we live with other. Either we can see, either we cannot see. Maybe there are some entities, like uh, maybe in the Western, you you are familiar with alien or what you called. I'm not familiar, but they are there. They're over there. They're here with us. So you know that the connectivity you can feel it, but also. 
remember that uh, we have to um, protect our staff and our environment because you know these those are all uh, energy beings just like us. So our energy contacting each other. So if we uh, protect our energy with the goodness, with the kindness, so we surround, we attract again another positivity. That's what I believe. Has the memories of your near-death experience faded over time? Yes, it's faded over time. So what I tell you, I think it is only 80%. Um, maybe 75, 80%. But that's why I, I tell you, like, I couldn't remember it was seven layers of the sky or five layers. I forget. I stood right at that time on point, but I didn't. In Islam, yeah. it, I'm, not, I'm not sure which religion it is, but I thought one of them says that there are the seven levels of heaven or something. Yes. Yes. In Islam, they say the seven heaven, seven so, layers, sky number one, sky number two, like that. So maybe you did go to the seven levels of heaven. But it was what I went, it was not heaven yet. Because heaven, when the people goes to the train, then they will go to the heaven. So what I experienced, that sky, it, it's not heaven yet. Do you think it's possible that the seven levels of heaven were misinterpreted? It really should have been the seven levels of sky? Oh, in Islam, we have seven layers of sky and we have seven heaven also. Mm. So there are two seven. Oh, okay. It's the, yes, yes, like that. At this point in your life, do you fear, mm -hmm. do you fear death? No, at all. I'm already, because I believe like that is not dead. We are, uh, we, we will never be dead. So we are just goes to another realms or another dimension. So it's just like opening a page of book. No, oh, the electricity is gone, but you can see me clearly. Yeah. Still, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. So uh, uh, I believe that uh, life is not stopping here. After that, it just we move to another dimension. We move to another realm, and we have a new chapter of another life there. If you had a friend who lost a loved one, yes. what kind of advice would you give? Yeah, actually, uh, if I also experience that I'm losing uh, uh, my loved one, also it's going to be sad and grief and, you know, because we are not physically meet them anymore, right? Uh, so what, but I could say like, uh, and you know, like, uh, this life is in this world is only temporary, but we will not, we are not over here. We will meet again in, uh, another realm, another dimension. So it's, it's dependent on the good deeds. So either the loved one having more good deeds than you, or you are having more good deeds. So you both can, uh, take each other. So either you go uh, to their place or they go to your place. Because uh, someone who loves, it's a bond forever. Love is the big bond of this universe. So with the love itself, you will get together again. But it must be based on love only. Because otherwise, mm, there's no similarity. So... Uh, only love will bring you close. So this is this is a mankind and humanity. Love is not a small thing. Love is not we think it just love between um spouse or between parents. Love is very universal. Universal. Whomever you love, they will be with you. That's what I believe. After here in the life after like that. So no need to uh, grief like for a very long time because um, it's just a matter of time we also will depart it from here was the other side more real than here or dreamlike more real of course this one is dream the world we are here that's why uh, 
I don't know, but in Eastern, we 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 call it a uh, life is an illusion. We call it there. They, we have an idiom that life is just a. Uh, they call it like a, you know, uh, like a stage of acting. So it was actually. I feel it. Yeah, that one is real. This one is just you know, uh, time passing. So actually, the real life is after we that. That's the real life. Here is, uh, yeah. Why do you think we come here? Because uh, we are here, uh, so we can be for experience only. Like a God created us to, uh, because in Islam we believe that we are all from heaven before, and then we are moved here. So f- to facing a physical experience, life experience. And then we will all move again to heaven, mm. like that. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That <laughs> yes, was... that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't but know also, that. But it's also interesting to uh, get to know others' person opinion and way of life, way of thinking is very interesting. I like it. Yola, you have a YouTube channel, and it looks like you make children's videos or something. Can you tell us about yes. it? Yes, my YouTube channel named Kingdom Imaginaria. I am I am A G I N A R I A. So it's inspired by love and uh, you know the feeling of falling in love. So I created it is both for our children and for teenagers. So I created like all kingdom stories. So it's all imaginary, but it's also real based on uh, situation there's a Pakistan there I make a, a location in Indonesia and so many so you guys if you have time please check it out well the animation looks great so good job thank you yes I made it myself and I also dubbed it by my own voice oh cool and I make the storytelling after watching this podcast People mm-hmm. may want to ask you questions. Are you mm-hmm. are you okay with that? And if so, how I'm do okay they how do they contact you? Mm, they can contact to my email. What is your email? Uh, y o l l a n i n a eighty two at gmail dot com. Yola, before we finish up. Can you give us one more positive message? One more positive message that we can uh, spread to the world or at least spread to you and your loved ones, whoever surrounding you. Number one, very, very important. Don't ever judge people. Don't ever judge any God's creation. God loves them dearly to them. So it is not you, the one who judge, who is wrong, who is right. So let the final judgment leave it to God. And you just do all the goodness, whatever. Even you can smile, you get give your best smile, your sincere smile. And then if you if we, uh, God given you a talent or skills, anything in knowledge or uh, you are as a musician, for example, do it. Do it for uh, humanity. Do it from your heart that you do it uh, for a, our better place, this earth. Like that, I think. Yola, thank you for your message. And thank, thank you, you for being my guest. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be part of your podcast. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.